All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're back for another Photoshop tutorial talking about how you can use the Liquify tool to adjust people's facial expressions and features of their face with just a couple of different sliders. And this is especially effective when you, say, have like your uncle over for Christmas or Thanksgiving or maybe the 4th of July. Everyone lines up and let's say, you know, he sneezed or something and wasn't quite smiling in the picture and everything was kind of thrown off because of it. You can then use this tool to fix that in Photoshop before you send it out to all of your relatives. And also in the case of this particular tutorial demonstration, our uncle is Tom Hanks. So all you got to do to get this tool to work is you just got to get the image that you want to use, select the facial area of whichever person you want to adjust. This is especially important in the case of a family photo with a number of people. Like you can just take your marquee tool by hitting M, clicking and dragging over the face that you want to adjust, and then find your way up to filter, liquefy. And what Liquify is going to do is it actually has a new feature in newer versions of Adobe Photoshop that allows it to identify people's face and then make adjustments based upon certain ratios over here in the face aware Liquify section. And there's actually the ability, which is even newer, where you can select between a number of faces that it detects inside of the image so you can actually it looks like edit the entire family all at once. So if Aunt Gladys has like a weird scrunched up expression too, you can knock them both out without having to select anything. So over here in the face aware section and face aware liquify, we've got things like how to adjust the eyes, nose, mouth, and face shape. Well, the first thing I want to do is clearly our uncle here, he is not smiling. So let's give him a nice smile. But if we turn it all the way up, it looks like about you'd expect. It looks like somebody took the smudge tool and just drug up the corners of his mouth. So now it not only looks like he's not smiling, but whatever expression he's got is like a smile of like masking immense physical or emotional pain, which we don't want. So we just want to kind of like tweak these just a little bit so that it kind of looks like he's smiling just a little bit. So it's natural, but not so crazy that it looks like somebody's holding up his mouth with invisible fingers. And you can decide if you want more or less upper lip so it doesn't look like he's pursing his lips as much, which makes it a lot simpler to edit these things. We can even make his mouth a little wider to the point where, again, we're starting to get into goof troop levels of smiling grin. And then we can stretch his mouth to make it just look bigger overall. Then let's say his eyes really aren't selling me, like, Come on, Uncle Uncle Tom Hanks. You, you you're clearly having way more fun at this at the family picnic than than you than you let on. Let's see if we can't adjust that as well. So let's go up to eyes. Eye size is pretty good, and I like to make sure when I do adjust eye size that I've got this little ratio button locked off so that I don't try to edit one eye at a time and end up with a bug-eyed frog monster can also adjust eye height so that the eyes are a little bit taller or wider as opposed to just adjusting the overall size. We can also add tilt with the eyes in case we want someone to look more Asian, less Asian. Maybe they look like they're squinting. This would be a good way to adjust for that, especially when they've got a pained expression on their face. And then we can change the distance on their eyes in case we're using, say, a funny focal lens on a camera, then we can fix those types of distortions right here. For the most part, if someone's expression is greatly uh, skewed from what you'd want, you'd probably have to either edit it manually with different tools or give up on that image altogether and just let Uncle Tom look like he's having a really bad time. Likewise, this allows you to edit just about every portion of an image. You can edit the forehead, you can give them more chin, less chin, you can give the jaw more or less so they have like a narrow face versus a really heavy set sort of fatter face. You can even increase the face width itself until they look like they've been stretched out on a panini. I suppose you could also use this to create a bunch of wacky cartoonish looking characters if you also wanted to. Likewise, if you mouse over different features of your family member or whoever you're editing the photo of, you can actually hover over things like their eyes 
and use these different lineups to adjust eye angle to make them bigger, smaller, taller, wider, all of those things. Although do note that unless you hold shift, these items will not be locked to two eyes at once. It'll edit these eyes individually. And if you want to just make like really goofy pictures, this is the way you'd want to do it, honestly. You'd use this tool to make them look like they're having one a heck of a day eating lemon candy or something or Sour Patch Kids. And then presto change oh bingo bingo, we've got some sort of bizarre creature that we've made. Sorry, Tom Hanks. It had to be done. People need to know how to use this tool. It's incredibly important for the survival of the human race. But yes, that is, in a nutshell, how you use the liquify tool to adjust different facial features on people, because it automatically identifies their face. It's worth noting that if their expression is off enough, again, this isn't going to be a magic bullet to fix it. You'll either need like a, a standalone tool that you buy from another company or to edit it manually. That sort of stuff we'll have to cover in another tutorial. So that's it for this one. I just wanted to showcase how the Liquify tool face detection software works in Photoshop. And until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe and throw your questions in the comments below, and I will catch you next time. If you're interested in learning more about Photoshop or just some other tutorials in general, I've got some more popping up here on the screen. Until next time, have a good one, everybody.